be with you. How wonderful it is to welcome you to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, a place that is gathered by God to share the love of Jesus. This is the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, and St. Paul's has once again opened to the congregation so that we might be able to worship in person. But it's not just those of you who are here who are worshiping. We're so glad to welcome so many of you who are joining us out in Facebook on our live stream. Welcome to St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We hope that you will check in with us and let us know that you've been here. Let us know where you're worshiping from. It's always good to read those comments and to see and to be encouraged by the folks uh, who are coming from all points of the map and compass in order to join us here in the house of the Lord. As we just heard in that wonderfully played prelude by Ella, thank you so much for that musical offering. Uh, You've allowed us to set our hearts away from the cares of the world and to the praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. He is the King of creation, and as the King of creation, what he says goes. And today, we're going to hear some of the things that Jesus says uh, in a parable, a parable of the wheat and the tares from Matthew chapter 13. Remember, this summer, we are going to be, we're focusing on the one, Jesus, and we are the ones who follow him. So we're going to be looking for ourselves in this parable as much as we're going to be looking for Jesus and what he is doing. So here, Jesus has some strong, but still some very encouraging things, some some blessed things for us to take to heart and to put into practice in our lives. As we worship today, we're going to be using here in the church the displays that you see in other uh, up in the corners of the of, of the uh, of the nave. Uh, And if you happen to be at home through the wonders of picture in picture, uh, we're able to send to you the same sort of liturgy that we are using here in the building. So please follow along that way. If you are really married to paper and want to have that with you, uh, we encourage you to download a service at spalutheran.org slash live. You'll find the worship service there in PDF form. So, a few other things before we begin. First, as you know, as we have resumed in-person worship, there are a lot of things that are different. So, for those of you on the live broadcast, you cannot see the fact that everybody here, except for those of us who are up here leading worship, are in masks. We're sitting every third pew. People are socially distanced, six feet away from one another, with the exception of the Richmond clan, which is, you know, filling up a pew right over there. Um, they, uh, they, they, they share their germs already. So, So uh, we're doing that. But one of the most important things that we do prior to worship is we have to register for worship. So I want to encourage you, if you are comfortable in coming back out and functioning here in the, in the worship space, uh, we encourage you to visit St. Paul's website, spalutheran.org, and there you'll find some Sign Up Genius. Those Sign Up Genius links will take you over to the ability to register for worship as well as to register for our communion services. We have our communion services separate from our Sunday experiences, and those happen on Thursday morning, uh, Thursday afternoons, and so we encourage you to sign up for that so that you are able to receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood again. It's good to nourish our faith this way. Many of you already have. More are welcome to do so. The reason I mentioned this registration for worship is because for the next two weekends, there is actually not going to be any in-person worship here at St. Paul's. Uh, we, I'm going to be heading out on vacation, and I'm looking forward to being on vacation, and I'll miss you. We'll be praying for you. But on the weeks next Sunday and the Sunday afterwards, we are pre-recording those services. In fact, next Sunday's is already in the hopper. We did that yesterday, and in the next couple of days, we'll take care of the Sunday after that. So everybody is invited to join at 10 o'clock in the morning for a pre-recorded broadcast of the services for next Sunday and the Sunday afterwards. Uh, I hope that they're helpful to you. Uh, Worship is worship no matter where and when. So if you're singing to pre-recorded music or live music, it is still our hearts relating to God and God speaking to us by his word. And so we encourage you to uh, worship in that way over the next couple of weeks. With all of that said, I think it's time to turn our attention back away from announcements and to the reason that we have gathered. And what's the best thing to do when we gather as the people of God? We pray. So let's turn to the gathering prayer. Let us pray together. O Lord, my creator, redeemer, and comforter, as I come to worship you in spirit and in truth, I humbly pray, open my heart to the preaching of your word so that I may repent of my sins, believe in Jesus Christ as my only Savior, 
and grow in grace and holiness. Hear me for the sake of his name. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand to join in our opening hymn, Sing to the Lord of Harvest. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my, my mouth, mouth shall declare, declare your praise. praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make, Make haste, haste to help me, O Lord. Glory, Glory be to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O, o come, come, let, let us, us worship, worship him. him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory, Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. I would love to pray together. <laughs> o oh God, grant, grant us, us such strength of faith in our hearts and minds that, that we may live in peace no matter the trials or tribulations affecting us until you receive us in your harvest at the end of this present age. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of the Lord.
The Old Testament reading for this seventh Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 44. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Beside me there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me, since I appointed an ancient people. Let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear also the word of the Lord as it comes to us from Romans chapter 8, the greatest chapter. Paul writes, For I consider that the sufferings of the, this present time are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and decay. I'm sorry. To obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, and we gather as weak human beings, frail and fallen, knowing that we need the Lord's restoration. Thanks be to God. He gives us that restoration through the grace of Jesus Christ, which we now remind ourselves again and access through confession and absolution. I want to hear you say the words to me. 
God above and besides who, whom, besides whom there is no other God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lord, who sets us free from our bondage, that we may obtain freedom, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lord, you who spare the weeds for the sake of your wheat, have, have mercy, mercy on, on us. Only God most high. The earth is full of your love, but we still turn away to many passing loves that seize our attention. Forgetting there is no God besides you, we often think that we know what is best, but we don't. And so we groan under the weight of our sins. Hear our cry for Jesus' sake and have mercy on us. Beloved in Christ, God, the only God, hears your cry for mercy, blotting out your transgressions for his own sake and remembering your sins no more. Upon this, your confession, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, I announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May he who began this good work within you bring it to completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please rise, wave at one another, share the peace of the Lord with one another here in the room, and peace to all of you out there in the live broadcast. God's peace and blessings be with you. Peace, man. We join in singing, Fruit We Bear. Let us agree that we will be signs of the life to come. And may we believe and freely receive all that God has done. May the fruits we bear be right. All the fruit won't fall so far from the tree. Abide in you, abide in me, and the Father is glorified. May the fruit we bear be Christ. As we live, may we forgive gratefully. We've 
we bear be Christ may the harvest be ripe all the fruits won't fall so far from the tree abide in you abide in me and the Father is glorified may the fruit we bear be Christ one more of those may the fruit we bear gospel according to saint matthew the 13th chapter glory, glory to, to you, you o lord jesus put another parable before his disciples saying the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field but while his men were sleeping his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away so when the plants came up and bore grain then the weeds appeared also and the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? He said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. Jesus answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers, and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I invite you to be seated for our sermon hymn. Come, you thankful people, come. Fruit unto his praise. 
grace and mercy and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I know for sure that our normal organ does not have that sound on it. That one sounds like it comes out of a 1980s movie, but it was good. I'm glad that you sang along with us. So isn't the English language great? Uh, those of you who are not native speakers might disagree with me. It's a very difficult language to learn. We have words that sound alike but are spelled differently, and we have words that are spelled differently that sound alike. What a strange, strange wor world we live in. Today, the title of our sermon is Tears, Tears, and Tears. Try to say that 20 times fast. You'll have a better diction afterwards when you do it. But it comes to us from the parable that Jesus related to his disciples there in Matthew chapter 13 that I was privileged to read to you just a couple of minutes ago. Tears, tears, and tears. So a tear is not something that we normally talk about, except maybe if you're standing at the deli counter, you'll see on the scale it says tear weight. And that's what you want to put, you know, the amount of weight of the packaging that is going to be there. But that's not the tears Jesus is talking about in this parable. There, he's talking about a plant. And the tear plant is actually slightly intoxicating. It is slightly toxic. And what would happen is these tares would grow in amongst the wheat, and it looks just like wheat when it's growing. I was thinking about how there are, this happens in our gardens. Here at St. Paul's, if you go out front right now, there are some cone flowers that are just a little bit past their prime. But they were very beautiful about a week ago. They were in danger, actually, of being rooted out by a very well-intentioned Lisa Summerer because they looked just like weeds, all right, at that point in time. What are these things? Are they weeds? And somebody wise uh, that I'm married to said, no, maybe not. <laughs> uh, and so why don't we leave them there? And she was acting, actually, just as the, the owner of the field, the master, was at that point in time. There might be some good there. This parable goes on to tell us a very comforting story on the one hand and a very uncomforting, discomfort, discomforting story on the other hand. And it talks about time now and time later about the, who we are and what might happen with us on the last day. And so the disciples, when they first heard this parable, they understood what a tear was and they understood what wheat was, and they also understood that inclination, like Lisa Summerer had, to get rid of the bad as soon as you possibly can. So, have any of you here in this room or out there on the live broadcast had a, a diagnosis of cancer? Any? Okay. Were, did you feel the desire at that diagnosis? Get it out of me right now. That is a, a normal human reaction. I don't want that in me because I know what can happen if it stays in me. Bad things as time goes on. So people who have new cancer diagnoses always, uh, without, without exception, say, I can't believe it. I, have, I tried to get an appointment with my oncologist and they're booked up for the next six months. I might have to live with this cancer for another six months before I can do anything about it. It induces fear. And that's actually same kind of response that the servants there in the field had when they learned that there were tares in and among the wheat. They really wanted to go through and tear out the tares. They wanted to find those counterfeit, pre presumptive, imposter weeds and get them out of there. But the master said no wisely. He said, what if when you're going and tearing out the bad, you also happen to tear out the good. We have in us a desire to try and set things straight. When we see something that is not right, we got to fix that thing. Maybe that's more of a male thing than a female thing, I'm not sure, but i got to fix it. I can't let well enough alone for any time. And because I feel this way, and I could speak personally about this, it causes all kinds of agita and stress. I got to do something about this right now. That's the same inclination, the same impulse that those servants who wanted to go out weeding had. They wanted to get rid of the bad. As we look around, as we read the news, as we look at toppled statues in Congress Park, are any of us kind of beset with a, this has to stop now kind of feeling? 
for me. It, it angers me. There shouldn't be this kind of evil in the world. What did that statue really do to anybody? But the master is wiser than I am. I would love to root out the things that are not good. And Jesus says, it'll all come out in the harvest. What should we be focusing on then, given who we are? Well, we have to figure out who we are in the parable. So, who we aren't is the master. We're not the enemy. We're not the tares. We're not the harvesters. What are we? We're the wheat. And what does wheat do? Bears fruit. It grows and brings forth the grain that's going to be useful as bread or whatever later on. That's what we focus on. It is not our job in God's kingdom work to go around rooting out evil within our own lives, sure. So we take a mirror and we look at ourselves and we see our failed inclinations. As we see our wrong intentions. As we see places where we are prideful, where we have a log in our eye versus the speck in our neighbor's eye. Go ahead. You root up that weed. Bring it to the Lord. He'll be glad to remove that sin from you as far as the east is from the west. But he doesn't ask us to look at the speck in somebody else's eye. And he doesn't ask us to weed somebody else's field. He asks us to bear fruit. Fruit that will last. He asks us to be devoted in prayer and grow in grace and holiness. He asks us to be faithful and worship and learn and practice for eternity here on earth. He desires that we love and serve our neighbors, even if they happen to be a weed. Who knows what God, the master, has in store? Could it be that even some of the tares that we can look at and say, there's one, and there's one, and there's one, and I'm not pointing at anybody in specific, <laughs> just pointing in general. Could it be that God wants to take them from being a tear and turn them into wheat? When we turn against and turn away from those who are around us that are not yet a part of the kingdom, we're preaching a sermon. And it's not a good one. It says God doesn't want you. That's not the right inclination for us as Christians. Because as we've talked about before, this is the summer of the one and the ones who follow him. How does the one, Jesus, feel about those who are not yet a part of the kingdom? He wants them. He loves them. He wants to spare them from being gathered at the harvest and burned in the fire. God's inclination is to save everyone. The people who infuriate us, the people that we don't understand, the people who we would stand back and aloof from and say, sinner, God wants them. And if we are the ones who follow the one, that's the work that the Holy Spirit is trying to bring forth in our lives. That's the work that he's trying to bring forth out of this wheat. To be so wheaty that the world will see and come to know the one who sowed us as good seed in the field and be saved. 
Around here we say God has a mission and we are part of it. It's not God's mission at this time to hold people's sins against them. At this time, the mission of God is to hold people's sins against Jesus and to let him bear the brunt of the judgment of God like he has for us. We get to be a part of God's merciful work, his love-giving work, his glory-seeking work, his future-securing work by being the good wheat that God planted in the world and engaging with the tares that are around us. Jesus said about the day of judgment that on that day there is going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I don't know what gnashing of teeth is I just don't want to experience it. It's kind of like cancer. I don't want that. Keep it away from me as well. But wouldn't it be better if when we are gathered into the harvest, we'll look around and see some of the former tares that were planted by us. There, gathered around the throne of the Lamb in his kingdom, where arm in arm, heart by heart, voice with voice, we will praise the God together who sowed us into his kingdom. Won't that bring tears of joy rather than weeping and gnashing of teeth? Right now, God is sparing the weeds so that the wheat have a chance to love them. Right now, God is sparing the weeds so that they'll have a future with the wheat to be gathered into God's barn, into his granary of good and glory. Right now, the master is giving us a chance to be weedy and to be a blessing to those who are weedy so that those tares will not experience tearing but rather the tears of joy that come when we know how good the master has been to us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise and sing yet another song of harvest. This is not come you thankful people come. This is hark the voice of Jesus call.
seated. Normally at the time of the gathering of tithes and offerings, I invite the ushers forward and we have a little opportunity to respond to the Lord by giving him in thanksgiving our tithes and offerings. But since we are not gathering those offerings uh, physically now, there is a plate at the back door of the church where if you brought an offering with you today, you can certainly leave that there and we will be very glad to receive it. The other thing that you can do is to visit the website, which is there on your screen, spalutheran.org slash give. That will take you over to our electronic giving site, Vanco, where it's a very simple process to be able to return an offering to God. I wanted to take a moment and talk about offerings in the context of good seed. So those disciples in the parable, the, the workers, they were confused by the fact that good seed was sown, but a bad harvest was growing. That didn't make sense to them. And when we think about our stewardship, that applies. If we are faithful in our giving to God, as we sow trustingly into the kingdom of God through our offerings, why in the world would a bad harvest come to us? It doesn't make much sense, does it? So the encouragement that I want to give, and I think scripture gives here, is that we ought to trust the master of the field as he knows how to bring forth the harvest for those who sow. He knows how to provide for us as we faithfully give. It's a matter of trust where we put our resources into his hands and know that he's going to give us exactly what we need because he loves us. And so I want to thank you for the ways that you've already demonstrated that spiritual quality of trust and faith in giving your offerings. I want to encourage it and may God continue to bring forth from you good fruits so that you can see the harvest that he's got prepared for you as you sow seed in faith to him. Thank you so much. We turn now also to our prayers, and prayers also have a quality of faith, of trusting that God is hearing us and wants to help us, that he's going to bring good from our prayers. I've spoken about times where we have been able to see direct results of our prayers. Last week, I talked about Ron Dreer, and it was a great thing to be able to mention this man who is cancer-free. This week, I want to tell you about somebody else who is near and dear to us as a congregation, Jeff Stewart. As you know, that he has made his way from Westchester Medical Center down to the Shepherd Center, which is in Atlanta, Georgia, for further rehabilitation. I received a photo yesterday, and if I had been thinking about it, I would have put it up on the broadcast. I saw him in a wheelchair with no tubes. This is an incredible, incredible healing that God has brought, and I attribute it specifically to his goodness and our appeals to God on his behalf, calling upon him so that God might deliver him from what would have been and probably was certain death. Now he has a new life coursing through his body, and it's because God is good and knows how to bring a good harvest. We ought to sow as many prayers into God's field as we possibly can. He knows how to bring a harvest of good, and so my encouragement to you is to be very much on the lookout for concerns and things that need prayer. Maybe those things that provoke you, that make you want to weed out in your life, those are things that we ought to be praying about. Let us know about them so that we can pray for you in them. St. Paul's is a congregation of prayer, and we receive prayer requests all the time, and the best way to get them to us is by email prayer at spalutheran.org. Prayer at spalutheran.org is checked on a regular basis. We receive prayer requests. They get sent out to prayer chains when appropriate. They're listed in the worship folder and our weekly connect when appropriate. But always, always, they are prayed for right in that moment. And so please sow your prayers as good seed in the kingdom of God. We never know what kind of incredible harvest he's got planned for it. So bearing all of these things, Oh, we have, a, we have an offertory prayer first. Let's sow that seed, and then we'll turn our attention to the prayers of the church. Let us pray. Mighty God, our comfort and strength, though we have been living in fear of disease, death, and deprivation, we still offer our gifts to the work of your kingdom, knowing that we are your children, heirs of your kingdom. Since you sow the good seed of your generosity in the field of our lives, Help us produce a rich bounty to return thanks to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now.
we turn our attention to the prayers of the church. Each of the petition conclu petitions concludes, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. The world and all it contains belongs to you. But the sufferings of this present time remind your people that we are not yet home. Help us to trust in your mercy until you fulfill all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. You establish rulers according to your will. Grant us wise and just men and women in all positions of public trust in this and every land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious, yet all creation still cries out in pain. Restore strength and wholeness to all who are in need, especially those to those near and dear to us whom we remember before you now. Sustain them and bring them healing in your good time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O oh God, you are merciful and gracious. Each day we are reminded that we are not yet home. But by your promise, we wait for your coming kingdom in which righteousness dwells. Until that day, keep our going out and our coming in free from evil. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior has taught us, so we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to receive, stand to receive the benediction of the Lord. Please rise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Everlasting God.
defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up on wings like eagles. We are gathered by God to, to share, share the, the love of Jesus. Jesus. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'll invite the congregation, please, to be seated as you were ushered to your seats at the beginning of the service. The ushers will gladly usher you out of the church, beginning in the back. God's blessings be with you on your week. Go be the best wheat that God has sown into his world and into his kingdom forever. For those of you who are not yet ushered out, we have an opportunity for you still to sing. It'll be on the screen. This is a, a, a song based on our Old Testament reading about the only God that there is, our God, Rock of Ages. To be faithful and true There is no rock There is no God like us Rock of ages Jesus is the rock Rock of ages Jesus is the rock Rock of ages Jesus is the rock If you're still with us in the live broadcast, everybody who's been here at St. Paul's at 149 Lake Avenue has gone home and it feels a little bit like the very, very end of Ferris Bueller's day off. What, you're still here? Well, I'm glad that you're still here and I'm hoping that as you go home, you too will be the best wheat that God has ever planted in his kingdom. And as you bear fruit, many tares will see what you're doing and ask you about it and that you will encourage them to turn to the one who is not only the planter of the good, but the harvester of good as well. God's peace be with you as you go. I love you so much. The Lord of the harvest loves you even more. Go in his peace. Bye-bye now.